G'day guys, welcome. Welcome to a, uh, a really early preview. Um, generally I don't do these previews until the Thursday or the Friday. Just depends on you know whether we have a Saturday game or a or a Sunday game. But I'm actually heading away with the family for three or four days to a little place called Fish Creek here in Victoria um, on the Wilson's Promontory. Never been there before. Never been there before in my life. I'm actually just need to get away. We need to get away. Need a bit of a break. Um, and I'm just hoping, hoping like hell. Um, that there's very limited internet, so I can just just zone out for a period of time. So I'm actually looking forward to watching this game um, in some little cosy pub somewhere with a with a nice open fire and a few beers, um, and just really chill out. Um, I think I think that's sort of where we're at the moment, really. Um, I mean, finals are, are out of the question. Um, so it's just, I suppose it's probably just trying to enjoy the rest of the year and trying to get something out of it. And let's see, let's see what we can get out of it. So I'm actually looking forward, I'm actually looking forward to getting away and watching this game um, in a pub somewhere, in a pub somewhere. So I'll get it out. We don't know where this game's going to be played. Is it Geelong, Tasmania? Um, I don't know. Could be played in my hometown of Werribee. Who knows? Ballarat, bloody nutter wadding. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, look, there's no doubt, there's no doubt if you look at both teams, if you look at both teams, look at us and you look at Fremantle Dockers, um, and who would have thought, who would have thought, and how things can change in 13 weeks. It's a long time, 13 weeks is a long time, and that, we played this mob back in round three, um, and coincidentally, actually watched that game in a pub as well in Ocean Grove. So <laughs> there's something about the Fremantle Dockers and me watching these games in a pub somewhere. But that was, I think, over the Easter weekend, uh, Easter Sunday, we played the Fremantle Dockers at uh, Marvel Stadium in round three. Um, and we certainly did, we certainly did a number on, on them. Um, and look, I don't think any of us got particularly carried away with that win. Um, but maybe the club did. Maybe the club did. Um, it's, uh, no doubt I think they probably did. 45-point uh, win. Dominated everything. Dominated every stat, basically. And, and, and how, the, how it has turned, though. Um, who would have thought, you know, the fact that we, we smashed them that day, smashed the Dockers that day. If you, if you look at where we are now, I don't think anyone would have predicted that the Dockers were the ones now challenging challenging, okay, for, for a position inside the top eight. Now only a percentage out at the moment. Um, and they'll need to win. They need to win. They need to win because Richmond is in front of them and Richmond have the Gold Coast Suns on Friday night here in Melbourne. You expect them to get the four points. You'd expect them to get the four points. They'll be desperate. And I actually like that. I like the fact that we're playing... Preferably, I'd love to be playing top eight teams for the rest of the year to really see where we're at. Um, but I like the fact that the Dockers have got a lot to play for, a lot to play for. Um, and who would have thought that, okay? I think most of us would have hoped that that would have been us in that position. And how good would have that been to go into this game, us wanting that, needing that win, needing that win? Um... But unfortunately, that's not the case. And we, we did a number on them. We did a number on them, and things have changed since then. 111 more possessions we had in that game. We had it probably too easy, and they would have been bitterly disappointed. And it'd be interesting to see what they learned from that game, because I reckon Justin Longmuir is a really smart cookie. I really do. We had dominated the inside 50s, had 21 more inside 50s, 64 to 43. That was huge. Uh, won the clearances by 14. Um, one out of the middle, had 17 more contested possessions, dominated on the outside with 94 more uncontested possessions, had 40 more marks, 20 marks inside 50 we had in that game in round three. And we laid, our pressure was really good, 13 tackles inside forward 50, which was a, a season high for us. So our pressure was generally good around the contest. And that was probably an area where the Dockers were really disappointed. And I think 
thinking back to that press conference with Justin Lomier after the game is he spoke about how impressive we were around the contest. Are we able to at least replicate that again? Considering last week, I think our contest work was pretty solid against Adelaide. It was one of the, one of the reasons why in the end we got the job done, although it wasn't pretty. Do we expect to see more of a progression on what we did last week against Adelaide? We'd like to think so. In fact, we do need to see more of a progression. We need to see more growth. I think in the end, it was an ugly win and an unconvincing win. Um, and on the other side of the ledger, you look at what the Dockers did on the road um, against Collingwood. Um, they were particularly impressive. They were particularly impressive. They, What I noticed about the Fremantle Dockers last week against Collingwood was how fit they were, how fit they were and how fit they looked, particularly in that last quarter. Um, and I don't just mean sort of conditioning in regards to the sort of the physical nature and the fact that they ran the game out, but just mentally as well, mentally strong. Um, they own those big moments. They were challenged in that last quarter against, against that sort of parochial crowd as well. Um, and how difficult that must have been as well. And to see them you know, win in that manner must give them a lot of confidence going into this week. Um, we, they, were, they were a little bit undermanned. Let's face it, they were a little bit undermanned when we faced them last time, particularly in their back half. They were without Alex Pearce, who's back into the team, and they were without Griffith and Logue. And Harry, big Harry, he had the day out. He had the day out of his life. He had kicked the seven goals. He played on Brandon Cox. Um, and the ball was getting pumped in there, what, 64 times. I mean, the way Harry played, and if we are able to supply him with that amount of ball this time around, he might not kick the seven. But, he, 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 you know, we, we back him against even against Alex Pierce or Griffin Lowe. That's the type of, you know, play that Harry's turned into. It. But it's going to be a lot more difficult. It's going to be a lot more difficult. And selection is going to be interesting as well. Um, so from that sense, they get those two boys in the back half and already they look a lot stronger defensively, the Fremantle Dockers. Um, and the fact of the matter is Nathan Fife didn't play the last time we played as well. That was significant for them. And I think what they'd be most pleased about is that he didn't play last week. He didn't play against Collingwood and he's sure to come back in this week. I sort of was thinking about this with Nathan Fife and how different it appears to the way we approach, I suppose, our, our biggest as asset. And we still probably think that Patrick Cripps is that, although Sam Walsh has become, I suppose, nearly our best player. But we never appear to want to rest Cripper, even when he's sore. Um, whereas the Dockers are quite happy to give Nathan Fife a week off, okay? And, and they're almost trusting trusting in their, their structures and their processes to get the job done without their superstar. Um, and I actually, I actually quite rate that. Um, whereas we, it almost feels like we don't trust, we don't trust our game plan or we don't trust younger players or other players to come in and fill that role that Patrick Cripps does. Um, I would have liked to have seen it at some stage this year um, give Cripper a week off if he needed it. And, and I reckon he may have needed it at times this year. The Dockers have been able to do that. And I think that I think that's good coaching. I think that's good coaching, trusting in your structures and processes. And what I liked about Justin Longmuir's press conference last week after the Collingwood game is he wouldn't buy, he wouldn't buy at all into finals talk. I think he was asked three times, three times about the possibility of playing finals football. And every time, every time, and it may have sounded boring, okay, it may have sounded boring, but every time he just played the straight bat, okay, he just kept saying, he's, he, he just kept saying, if we stick, okay, to the structures, if we stick to the processes, all right, the results will come, the, res the results will look after themselves, okay? We are not, okay, we're not buying into any of that. Um, I think that's great. I think that's great. And sometimes I think maybe I wish we approached, okay, the way we go about it in regards to 
how we are perceived externally a little bit differently. But, okay, we put the expectations on ourselves at the start of the year uh, and they were huge expectations. Okay, we're ready. Um, no more excuses. Uh, these players aren't young anymore. Okay. And we're paying for it now. We're paying for it now. Um, so where, where, I mean, the big question is, we know that Harry's not going to have it all his own way. We know that Pierce is going to go to Harry or even a Griffin Lake. So that's going to be a lot different. We know they lose Matt Tabernum, okay, which changes the ruck situation just a little bit for them because he has been the one who's been giving Sean Darcy a chop out. So what happens there in that regard? Where do they play Nat Fife? Um, and we must remember Rory Lobb as well didn't play the last time we played as well. Um, he has traditionally worried us with his height and with the, and he played particularly well against Collingwood last week. So will he spend most of the time forward? I would suggest that Nathan Fife will play. There's no doubt he will play and he will spend the majority of the time forward, which poses a lot of problems. And look, he would pose a lot of problems for every team in the competition, every team in the competition, not just us. Um, but you know what? I'm, I'm glad he's playing. I'm, I'm glad he's playing. I'm glad they're nearly at full strength. I'm glad that they've really got something to play for. Okay, because I want us, I want us to face a team that's one at full strength, but also I've got something to play for. Okay, I don't want to play someone who, you know, who's got half their team out or, you know, got nothing to play for. That really won't say a lot for us. So if we win this game, okay, I think that's credit to us. Okay, that will be credit to us because I think the, the three men of Dockers are travelling pretty well at the moment and I think their, their development is really solid. So if he plays forward that five, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I just don't know who plays on him. I, I really don't. Uh, and I wouldn't even want to try and guess. I, I, I wouldn't be comfortable with Lockie Plowman although he might have to play him on some stages. Um, you know, we've seen Plowman play on, on Walters before. Um, you know, it, does Weedering go to Fife? Um, does Jones play on Lobb? Uh, or vice versa? I mean, you wouldn't be playing Jones on Fife, I wouldn't have thought, but you might play Jacob Weedering on Fife. Does Plowman sometimes play on him, or is it purely just a team a team defence on, on Nathan Fife, but he, he is going to pose a big headache for us forward or centre. And not to mention, obviously, when he goes to centre bounces as well, because uh, we know how good he is around the ball. So he's going to be an absolute huge in for them. But as I mentioned before, it's not about just Nathan Fife. Okay, they will back they will back their midfield in against ours. There's no doubt about them. And they were down the last time they played against us. And they will be all really keen to atone for that poor performance. They wouldn't want to put in another poor performance like they did against us back in round three. Um, there's no doubt. There's no doubt to me that that that, that David Mundy uh, is is a key in there. Um, but at the same time, he's not the only one. I think they've got a, a trio of, of of future stars in like the Sarong, Brayshaw, and Chera, who are still not quite there, but. As a trio, they're very good. Um, what I like about the approach with Mundy is um, I think it just shows that age is no barrier. Um, but he's not, He's he, even though he's the main man, he's not. He's still taking, he's taking somewhat of a back seat to allow those, those three guys to develop in there and others to develop in there as well. Um, and I think that's selfless. And I think he, he's turned out to be an absolute superstar for that football club. Um, and he, I just remember a game back in, I think it was it was Bolton's last year, David Mundy just had a day out against us at, at Marvel Stadium. He just turned it on. Um, he, he just really turned it on. And, and he, he he's just, it just seems to be getting better and better and better. So that's going to be pivotal. And that ruck battle, that ruck battle, this is going to be, it's going to be an absolute, Beauty, I reckon. Um, two pretty young ruckmen, Sean Darcy, who's been in terrific form up against Tom DeConning. Um, it worries me a little bit. I think 
worries me because I think Sean Darcy was very good against Grundy last week. He may have lowered his colours fractionally, but in the last quarter when it really counted, he was the one. He was the one who kept them in the game. He was the one who owned those big moments. Um, he was terrific. Um, and we know we know Tom DeConning is developing. We know he's developing. And he's now, he had that full game last week, really, in the ruck. Um, is he capable of continuing to do that? Um, are, we, are we sort of just throwing him to the walls now against Sean Darcy? He's a little bit more seasoned than him, although he is still young. And do we need to, but do we need to consider, and I know this is not going to sit comfortably with a lot of supporters, but do we need to consider to bring Levi Kasbold in as the backup? I know, I know we used Jack Silvani last week. I know that, but I'm not, personally, you know what? I wouldn't mind them to roll the dice with it again and do it again and see how it goes. I really wouldn't, okay? It wouldn't really phase me. But I'm just looking at that ruck situation um, and how important that is. And the fact that we want TDK to be as fresh as he can. Is he capable of, of rucking pretty much for the whole day against Sean Darcy? It, it's such a big one. And I thought Levi Casbolt was absolutely outstanding when he was in the VFL after he was dropped and went back and played against Port Melbourne and had to play a full game in the ruck because young Murkoff went down in the opening minutes. And he found, he found form. He really did. He was absolutely outstanding. He got his marking back. He moved really re well around the ground. Um, and there's no doubt he found something. He's not a long-term investment, don't get me wrong. But for this game and where TDK is at the moment, I don't know, I just feel a little bit safer having Levi Casbolt there doing the pinch hitting stuff, then throwing Jack Silvani in there. That's just my personal view. Um, and I also think, I also think I wouldn't mind an extra tall in our front half as well. Um, and if Levi has found some form, if he has found some form, maybe he can clunk a few forward of centre and pose another headache, okay, for the likes of Alex Pierce and Griffin Logue and, and Luke Ryan. Um, because they will want it. They will want a double team. They will want a double team, uh, Harry. There's no doubt about that. That's going to be interesting because you look. You look at. We've got two forced outs, haven't we? We've got two forced outs. Um, so Zach Williams goes out suspended. I'm not even going to talk about that. That I just. I don't want to talk about that suspension. But he's out. So he. he and you would think that Newman, who was the medical sub comes in and just replaces him. I'm comfortable with that because uh, I thought Newman was was quite good in that role when he came in. Um, and the other one is the injury to Murph. Um, so who comes in for Murph? So if you look at the VFL from last week, they were putrid. They were putrid. And what, what a time to put in a performance like that. Let's forget about the team putting in a performance like that. But look, let's look at individually our AFL listed players putting in a performance like that. Wow. Wow. I mean, Williamson, horrific. Luke Parks, horrific. Lockie O'Brien, who could have come in for Murph, horrific. Kemp not ready. Durden not ready. Boyd not ready on that performance last week, the mid-season draft pickup. That leaves Levi, as I mentioned. Cotter's batted hard, but am I comfortable bringing him in after one week in the VFL? No. Honey didn't make the most of his opportunities. He wasn't the worst player last week, but didn't hit the scoreboard. Was lively. Could come in for Murph. Could come in for Murph. And I think I'd like to see that. The other one is Aaron Ramsey, who had 28 touches, played across half back, can play on a wing. Um, could he play that high half forward role? I'm not quite sure. Would they debut in Aaron Ramsey? Personally, I wouldn't mind, like, I wouldn't mind seeing that. 
And then there's Zach Fisher, who missed last week through injury. Is he right to play? Can he come back in? Is he underdone? He looks sore. Why rush him back in? I, I, I don't know. I really don't know. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Okay, I really like. Because I think that could be significant. I really do. Do we need, do we need, do we need Levi in there? Do we need him? Um, um, Because personally, personally, as I mentioned before, I'm not overly convinced with the Jack Sylvain experiment because I think, I think one, I think one, he's only spending very short periods of time in there, which is okay. I want to know what Jack's doing forward of centre as well. I want to know what impact he's having forward of centre. So if he's kicking, you know, one or two goals and, and having a big impact, okay, you can throw him into the centre, that's okay. But is he doing much in either role? Um, so what I'd like to see if he is going to be that, that pinch hitter in the ruck, I'd actually like to see him being a bit of a force around the ball and becoming an extra midfielder. Is he capable of doing that? We're just going to have to wait and see. It is fascinating. Um, let's not underestimate the Fremantle Dockers. I mentioned that they have improved um, defensively. Uh, if they win the contest, they're a very dangerous team. Um, they don't have a lot of firepower up forward without uh, Tabernard, who's out of the team, but they have workmen like small forwards who didn't play well the last time we played. Um, Walters, I think, was coming back from injury. He'll be better, obviously. He, he'll get better and better as the season has gone on. Schultz and Switzkowski. Switzkowski's got terrific pace. Bewley was good last week as well. Um, and Schultz is a hard worker, a bit like Matthew O is for us. He's just a hard worker um, in the forward half. And I've obviously got Rory Lobb, who can clunk them. He can clunk them and can be a real headache. I, th I suppose what I want to see from us, obviously, is the four points is critical. Okay, we need to see the win. But what I really would like to see, all right, and there's no doubt that they would have learnt something with Sam Walsh, okay, so they would have watched last week Adelaide really not pay a lot of attention to Sam Walsh um, considering the week before against the Giants, Matt DeBall went to him. So have they got a player who can go with Sam Walsh? Have they got a player who has, has the commitment and the energy to go with Sam Walsh for a whole game? I actually liked the way... We started Walsh on a wing last week to allow him to work in the game from a wing. It's very difficult to tag someone on a wing. Um, once he got his game going, it was very difficult to stop. So what do the Fremantle Dockers do with him? But my, I suppose what I would like to see from this game is all about building. Building. So I want to see Matthew Kennedy build. Just build on his last two performances. Just build. Does he ne necessarily have to be play have the twenty eight disposal game like he did against the Giants? No, but I'd like to see him build that consistency. I want to see Paddy Dow. Does he necessarily have to take the twenty possessions and nine scoring inv involvements to another level? That'd be great. No, but I'd like to see him produce something similar to what he did last week. I'd like to see SBS grow his game from last week. I'd like to see it. He's, he's going to get the midfield opportunities. He's going to get those midfield opportunities. So he needs to do more than just be a bright spark in the first, what was it, the first half, where he, he seemed to be pretty good, but then went right out of the game. I want to see Matthew Owies build on his season and continue to build, continue to hit the scoreboard, continue to be a nuisance inside forward 50. I want to see Lockie Fogarty rediscover the form that he showed at the start of the year, okay? Because I think he's trailed off just fractionally, all right? I think he's just trailed off fractionally. So that's what I want to see. And obviously, I want to see Liam Stocker, okay, continue to build on his form and TDK as well. So all that group, all that next layer, all that next layer of player who really are going to be the future for us next year, okay? They're going to be the, they're going to be the ones... That will take us, okay, to the next level next year. So they need to start showing it now in the final eight games of the season. And that goes for anyone else who comes into the team. If it is an Aaron Ramsey, if it is a Josh Honey, if Matthew Cottrell does come back in, okay, I'd love to see, okay, that coming from that next layer of players. Um, 
I'm looking forward to the game. I really am. Um, who knows? I mean, we responded. I mean, the Heat was on us. Um, the Heat really hasn't been on us at all this week. It hasn't. I hope internally they're, they're putting the Heat on each other um, and, and they understand how important it is to keep winning for the rest of the season. Um, I'm going to have a nice weekend. I'll speak to you guys on probably Sunday. Bye for now.